Hello again! In this lesson I'm going to talk about Herpes viride family. I'm sure you know almost everything about this virus because it's really it causes really frequent and common infections. So uh, these viruses are really old and really well adapted to human beings. In fact the only natural viral reservoir is represented by the human beings. These viruses are about 100 and 200 uh, nanometers big. They are coated and they have a double strand linear DNA. So their DNA is really similar to our DNA. That's why it can be easily integrated inside the cellular, our cellular DNA. Their DNA has got inverted palindromic sequences at the extreme part of their molecules. So their molecule is able to be uh, in a circular state. Their DNA has got important genes divided into three sets. Alpha genes, which are the first to be transcripted, then beta genes and gamma genes. Alpha genes are, for example, um, transcriptional activators. Beta genes are transcriptional factors, um, a virus-specific DNA polymerase and a timidine kinase. Uh, gamma genes are basically uh, structural proteins. Herpes viruses normally stay latent inside specific cells, but they are able to be activated when uh, you are immunodeficiency. That means that your immune system doesn't work very well. There are many drugs that can be used for these infections. We have, for example, acyclovir or valacyclovir, gancyclovir or valglancyclovir. And we also have foscarnet. Foscarnet is also used for other diseases like AIDS, but it's really toxic because it's extremely aspecific. Foscarnet is a biphosphate analog. And as you know, we have a lot of biphosphate in our cells because it's uh, really important for a lot of metabolic events. So let's talk about alpha herpes virina subfamily first. In this subfamily we have herpes simplex type 1 and type 2 that are 50% similar to each other, they just infect different parts of our body because herpes simplex type 1 in normally infects our body uh, from hip upwards, while herpes, uh, herpes simplex type 2 infects our body beginning from the hip downwards. In this family we we'll also have uh, varicella virus which causes an infant rash disease called varicella and also herpes doser which is um, a disease that only uh, affects uh, adults. Alpha herpes virina um, usually cause some symptoms like hepatic symptoms, visceral symptoms um, and herpes, so uh, the cutaneous or mucosal uh, manifestations, eruptive manifestations that you know for sure. Uh, they can cause for example eye herpes, mouth herpes, congenital herpes and also uh, genital herpes. Alpha herpes virina normally stay latent inside uh, ganglia belonging to sensitive nerves. Um, and what about varicella virus? This virus causes varicella of course, but it also causes herpes zoster in adults. Herpes zoster symptoms are basically a, a terrible pain uh, related to um, a rush manifestations with hemorrhagic vesicles. The varicella virus is also able to cross the placenta barrier causing the uh, varicella syndrome, varicella congenit syndrome. Uh, it characterized by uh, defects in arms and legs, in eyes and central nervous system, basically. 
the mortality associated with this congenic syndrome is really high. But fortunately, we have the vaccine, as you remember, MPRV, which is a quadrivalent vaccine against measles, mumps, uh, rubella, and varicella, of course. Beta herpes virina normally stay latent inside hematopoietic cells. Um, and this subfamily we have herpes virus type 8, type 9 and cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus caused a mononucleosis like syndrome and um, it also causes retinitis, autoimmune syndromes, uh, transplant rejections, uh, visceral infections um, and also hepatic infections while herpes virus type 6 and 7 um, can also cause a, a mononucleosis like syndrome but they basically cause an infant rash disease called, called uh, six, the sixth disease or roseola infantum or also called exanthema subitum Gamma herpes virina instead normally stay latent inside lymphatic organs. In this family, we uh, with in this subfamily, gamma herpes virina normally stay latent inside lymphatic organs. In this subfamily, we have Epstein Barr virus and herpes human herpes virus type 8. So let's talk about Epstein Barr virus first. It causes uh, the infective mononucleosis, which is a self-limiting um, lymphoproliferative disease. Um, you can distinguish between the um, mononucleosis syndrome, the proper one, uh, from the mononucleosis-like syndrome because mononucleosis-like syndrome doesn't have pharyngitis and uh, mostly it has a rush manifestation but you don't find a rush manifestation in the, mononucle in the proper mononucleosis disease. In this disease you'll have splenomegaly, you'll have heterophilic antibodies production uh, similar to a leukemia situation. Then you will find pharyngitis, alteration of the hepatic function and the presence of a white plate in tonsils. Uh, so you can see them uh, if you ask your patient to open his or her mouth, of course. Mononucleosis is found to be a risk factor for multiple sclerosis. So it can be a dangerous disease. Uh, the healing occurs in about four or five weeks. So, The virus is also related to different tumors, for example, uh, Barkett lymphoma, non-Hodgkin and Hodgkin lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, uh, urogenital tumors and salivatory glands carcinoma, for example. How to make a diagnosis of this disease? Well, the diagnosis is normally made by looking for specific viral antigens uh, or better uh, looking for antibodies against specific viral antigens. So the diagnosis is made by laboratory techniques. So the antigens that we are going to look for are essentially uh, the antigen VCA which is the capsid antigen then we have uh, early antigens called, the first one is called EAR and the second one EAD. And then we have also a nuclear antigen called EBNA. So we'll be looking for immunoglobulin type M and G against VCA, against EAR, EDA and EBNA. If the patient is negative for every antigen, it means that the patient has never met the virus before. If the patient is positive for IgM anti-VCA, which is the capsid antigen, it means that the patient has recently met the virus. 
If the patient is positive for both IgM and IgG anti-VCA, it means that the patient has uh, met the virus, but it has met the virus some time ago. It's not a recent infection. If the patient is positive for IgG anti-VCA and anti-EBNA, it may be that the patient is um, facing a reactivation of the infection. If the patient is positive for uh, IgG anti-VCA and anti-EBNA, which is the nuclear antigen, it means that the patient met the virus some time ago. If the patient is positive for IgG anti-EAD, anti-EAR and EBNA, it means that the patient is facing a reactivation of the infection. While if the patient is positive for IgG anti-VCA, EAR and EAD, it may, means that he's got Barkett lymphoma. While uh, if the patient is positive for IgG anti-VCA, anti-EAD and EBNA, it means that the patient's got nasopharyngeal carcinoma. In this case, it will also be positive for IgA, which are uh, mucosal immunoglobulin. And what about the herpes virus type 8? It is the etiological agent of uh, Castleman disease, which is a benign lymphoproliferative syndrome is also um, the etiological agent of another um, sarcoma, which is called Kaposi sarcoma, which is often related to old age, male sex and immunodeficient people living in countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea where the syndrome is endemic. In fact, we have three different kinds of uh, Kaposi sarcoma. The classic one, the endemic one, and the AIDS associated one. Another syndrome that the virus is able to cause is the uh, primary effusive lymphoma. So today we talked about a lot of viruses. I hope that this information will help you to face in a more um, conscious way your herpes infections if you usually have them. If you don't have them, better for you. And so I'll wait you in the next lesson where we'll talk about hepatitis and the most important hepatitis viruses. So bye bye, see you soon.